an independent company. We bought a plant from GM. You may recall GM closed at the plant where they made the Chevy Cruze. And we bought the plant about a year ago and we're in the process of reconfiguring it to build the Endurance. So the name of the truck, the Endurance, is named after the people of Lordstown. So here's an overhead shot of the plant and the surrounding area. So we call this area Voltage Valley because we are building electric vehicles here. Also LG is building a battery plant close by. We also have some suppliers in the area that will supply uh, both our factory and their factory. And uh, we are just rebuilding the workforce in the area to be focused on electric vehicles. We're really proud to be a part of the Lordstown community and we are hiring workers every day. So you can see off to the right there, that's our solar array. Uh, that was there when uh, GM owned the plant and that powers part of the plant, proud of that. It's a really large plant, about 6.2 million square feet. That's bigger than O'Hare Airport, which is about 4.8 million square feet. So we have a lot of space. Chevy was building about 400,000 cruises a year when they shut it down. We have capacity to build about 600,000 vehicles every year here. We are building the beta trucks right now, and we expect to go into full production probably in Q3 next year with delivery starting in Q4 next year. So some specs on the truck. The truck was designed with needs in mind. It was designed to meet most of the needs of fleets, both government and private sector fleets, is the total cost of ownership. We anticipate that fleets will save about 20000 per vehicle over a five-year time frame. This figure is based on a vehicle being run about 20,000 miles a year for the five-year time frame. We do have a cost calculator on the website where fleets can go and put on in their parameters and crunch those numbers and see what their total cost of ownership is. That the range will be around 250. We don't have an EPA rated range yet. We uh, are building the beta trucks and those will be uh, tested and certified. We are expecting about 75% less uh, repair and maintenance costs. We have very few moving parts in the truck and it's a very simple design, streamlined. Uh, there isn't a lot to break down and uh, we really uh, are expecting fleets to save a lot of money in that respect. The curb weight we estimated about 5,300 pounds. Of course, most of the weight is in the battery. The hub motors weigh about 80 pounds each. That gives you that low center of gravity. As all of you know, with EVs, it's really fun. Even our truck performs like a sports car. Last week, we took it to Goodyear for some testing on the track. It's got incredible acceleration. 0 to 60 in about five and a half seconds. The top speed we have placed, it's software governed, so it's at 80 miles per hour. It will go faster than that. We're expecting, you know, with the hub wheels, that gives you uh, greater traction and true all-wheel drive because the motors are, are in each wheel. Here's a look at the chassis. So the battery is inside here, and you've got these rails here. So that adds another layer of safety to the vehicle because if your driver had a side impact, this is going to protect the driver more so than, say, a typical uh, gas truck. So on your left-hand side, this is what a lot of EVs look like. They have one motor at the front, and then that generates the power, and it has to go to each wheel. And we don't have any singular motor in the front trunk that's empty space that would be storage. And the hub motors make it uh, very efficient. Your power is produced in the wheel and it goes to the wheel. Here's a, a little bit of a look of the, uh, what's inside the wheel in terms of the hub motor. Um, you can see when you go to change the tire, you change it just like a regular uh, gas truck tire. It doesn't, the hub motor doesn't interfere with that at all. Our hub motors were uh, designed by a company called LaFe, and they've been working on them for more than 10 years. So this is not a new technology, it's been perfected. We have licensed it from them. 
they did a, a simulated 25 year test. So they, they simulated mud, and that was the mud resistance. And then here's your ice buildup test. You can see the ice just flies off of the motor. Here's your salt mist. Everybody asked about salt on the roads, and will that corrode the motors? It will not. Salt water immersion test. Here's a, a pass by test that they did. And then the winter testing was done in northern China where it's very, very, very cold. So here they simulated potholes and a brick road and embedded rock and speed bumps. And then here's the drop test. So the base price of the vehicle is $52,500. That is before the $7,500 federal tax incentive. It is warranted for three years bumper to bumper. The battery warranty is eight years, 100,000 miles which is fairly standard for EVs. We do have an outlet in the bed, which fleets can use to power up their power tools, uh, especially if they're out on a job site and they don't have access to electricity. It is a 110 outlet. It gets about equivalent of 600 horsepower. And I think I mentioned before it goes zero to 60 in five and a half seconds. Your towing capacity is 7,500 pounds and your payload is 2,000. So the front trunk is not set up in the show trucks to show you, but we will have about 20 cubic feet of storage space in the front trunk. So fleets can use that to store tools or other equipment, which frees up the bed space. The truck is designed to accept upfitting packages that the Silverado would accept. We will be able to do some basic upfitting at the plant. And then we're also working with third party upfitters uh, for more complex upfitting. It will charge up at level one, level two, your standard J1772. Um, this truck is not outfitted to do the fast charge, but the production truck will. It will be the CCS standard, and every truck will be uh, capable of fast charging. Do you have an infotainment system? You can see inside the truck there's a display. Also have a telematics package that we can offer to fleet so that they can have access to the data, many data points. They can know what their state of charge is. They can uh, troubleshoot in case their drivers haven't plugged it in at the end of the day. Uh, so that'll be very valuable um, to the fleet managers. We're in the process of securing our service centers right now. We should have at least eight service centers set up by the time we start making deliveries a year from now. Those will be interspersed around the country. We will also offer mobile technicians. We will be able to go out and visit fleets and do some repairs and maintenance that way. We will have um, some training for fleet technicians. We'll be able to train them on how to do certain uh, repairs to the vehicle. We're also in talks with some third party uh, companies about partnering with them on service, we will um, have some over-the-air updates that can be done as well. So we will be doing all of those um, service capabilities so that we are able to service all of the fleet's needs in terms of the service. In terms of dealership sales, we're in the states where we are legally allowed to sell direct to customers. We will be setting up dealerships in those states. And in the other states, we will likely be partnering with some third parties on that. And we are in the process of doing all that work right now. Any questions? Yes. Uh, you mentioned that your CEO, uh, so what's the actual history of the company? Was it always Lordstown or was it something else and then has morphed into Lordstown when the plant facility became available? It's always been Lordstown. Okay. So Steve Burns, our CEO, used to be the CEO of Workforce. But they are two separate companies, and Lordstown has licensed um, some technology from Workforce, and we will be paying royalty to uh, Workforce um, based on the 
based on uh, number of units sold. Now is Workhorse an Ohio company as well? or? Yes. It's right on the border of Ohio and Indiana. Okay. And I'm not sure if it's a corporate in Ohio or Indiana. I mean, it's a, one of the facilities up, is based in Indiana. Upper Midwest company, okay. So are you going to be building, um, doing your own stamping there, or are you going to be get, getting stuff? I mean, how much stuff is going to be out, uh, outsourced and how much is going to be in 